हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट बेसिक मेडिकल टर्मिनोलॉजी ऑफ ऑप्थेलमोलॉजी एज इट मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड रिगार्डिंग आई डिसऑर्डर सो लेट्स बिगिन बट बिफोर वी स्टार्ट वी मस्ट नो अबाउट व्हाट इज ऑप्थेलमोलॉजी सो गाइस ऑप्थेलमो मींस रिलेटिंग टू आई एंड लॉजी मीन्स स्टडी ऑफ मीन्स ऑप्थेलमोलॉजी मीन्स स्टडी ऑफ रिलेटिंग टू आई इन डिटेल्स इट इज अ ब्रांच ऑफ मेडिसिन एंड सर्जरी विच डील्स विद द डायग्नोसिस एंड ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ आई disorder and specialist in ophthalmology we can call it ophthalmologist now let's start our topic so the first term is a ophthalmoscopy also called as a fundoscopy it's a test that allows a health professional to inside the fundus of the eye and other structure by using ophthalmoscope or called as a fundoscope as you can see in a picture it is a done part of eye examination and may be done as a part of routine physical examination next we have accommodation as it names is a process by which the eye adjusts for near distance for example reading by using changing the curvature of the lens to focus a clear image on the retina keep in mind these two important points first one is when eyes are looking distant objects so ciliary muscles are relaxed this pull the eye ligaments tightly due to this eye lens become stretch and become thin so what happen focal length increase second one is a when eye are looking near by object so ciliary muscle are contract due to this eye ligaments are loose and eye lens become are thick and we are able to see near by objects so what happen focal length decrease next one is a adaptation it is a ability of the eye to become adapted to the amount of illumination either light to dark or dark to light as you can see in a picture for example when we are going out in mid afternoon time or when we are going in theater hall next we have roads and cones these two are photoreceptor cells roads are essential for bright light and dim light and cones are essential for visual acuity and color discrimination next one is a myopia also called as a near sightedness as you can see in a picture it is a refractive error in which image is focused in front of retina so what happen close objects appear clearly but far ones do not next one is a diplopia just like its name means seeing one object to double vision next one is a aphakia means absence of the natural lens as you can see in a picture next is a amatropia as you can see in a picture it is called as absence of reflective error or normal eye the refractive state of an eye in which parallel rays of light entering the eye are focus on the retina creating an image that is perceived as crisp and in focus myopia hyperopia and astigmatism are abnormalities of this desired condition next we have amblyopia also called as a lazy eye as you can see in a picture it occurs mostly in early childhood when nerve pathways between the brain and eye are not properly stimulated the brain favors the other eye so this condition will happen next one is a hypermetropia also called as a hyperopia a vision condition in which nearby objects are blurry and a common vision condition in adults next one is a blepharitis it is an inflammation of the eyelid that affects the eyelashes or tear production most commonly occurs when the tiny oil glands of the inner eyelid become inflamed it often occurs along with the other skin conditions or allergies next one is a conjunctivitis inflammation of conjunctiva also called as a pink eye which covers the white part of the eyeball Next one is a keratitis as you can see in a picture it is inflammation of the clear tissue in the front of the eye also called as a cornea keratitis is caused by infection injury disease or wearing contact lenses too long next one is a chemosis also called as a blister like condition it is a sign of eye irritation the outer surface of the eye means conjunctiva may look like a big blister it can also look like it has a fluid in it when severe the tissue swells so much that you can not close your eyes properly chemosis is often related to allergies or an eye infection next one is a cataract 
as you can see in a picture it is clouding of the normally clear lens of the eye most cataracts develop slowly over the course of years next we have glaucoma it is a symptomatic condition in which intraocular pressure more than normal means about 25 mmhg which leads to damage of optic nerve and may cause blindness Next one is a blindness. It is a term used for inability to see, usually defined as corrected visual acuity of 20 by 400 or less, or a visual field of no more than 20 degrees in the better eye. Next one is a photophobia, means or also called as a light sensitivity, is an intolerance of light. Sources such as a sunlight or fluorescent light that all can cause discomfort. Along with a need to squint or close your eyes, headaches also may accompany light sensitivity. Light sensitive people sometimes are bothered only by bright light. Next one is a hyperemia. Means an excess of blood in the vessels that supplying an organ or other part of the body. As you can see in a picture, hyperemia associated with allergic conjunctivitis is typically mild with a diffuse pink color and no sclerer vessel involvement. Next we have hyphema. As you can see in a picture, is a pooling or collection of blood inside the anterior chamber of the eye. Means the space between the cornea and the iris. The blood may cover most or all of the iris and the pupil, blocking vision partially or completely. A hyphema is usually painful. Next we have trachoma is a disease of the eye caused by infection with the bacterium chlamydia trachomatis. Mild itching and irritation of the eyes and eyelids they may progress to blurred vision and eye pain. Next we have entropion. The term entropion means a condition in which the eyelid is rolled inward against the eyeball typically caused by muscle spasm or by inflammation on scaring of the conjunctiva as you can see in a picture as in disease such as a trachoma and resulting in irritation of the eye by the lashes called as a trichasis next one is a ectropion ectropion is a condition in which your eyelid turns outward as you can see in a picture this leaves the inner eyelid surface exposed and prone to irritation Next we have binocular vision means the ability to maintain visual focus on an object with both eyes creating a single visual image. Next one is a tosis means abnormal low lying or dropping of upper eyelid as you can see in a picture. Next we have a myotic and mydratic these two are a chemical substance myotic means little pupil. It works by contraction of the ciliary muscle, contraction of the pupil which can be temporary or permanent depending on the cause. Mydratic also called as a big pupil means dilated pupils which may occur normally or in response to a trauma, illness or drugs. Next we have astigmatism. Seen in a picture is an imperfection in the curvature of your eyes, cornea or lens. Next we have a neovascularization is the natural formation of the new blood vessels as you can see in a picture. Usually in the form of functional microvascular networks which capable of perfusion by RBC that form to serve as collateral circulation in response to local poor perfusion or ischemia. Next we have bullous keratopathy is a condition in which the cornea becomes permanently swollen. This occurs because the inner layer of the cornea means the endothelium has been damaged and is not pumping fluid properly. Next one is a papilledema. It's a serious medical condition where the optic nerve at the back of the eye becomes swollen. There is a buildup of pressure in or around the brain which causes the optic nerve to swell. Next we have a sympathetic ophthalmia. Also called as a spared eye injury is a diffuse granulomatous inflammation of the uveal layer of both eyes following trauma to one eye. Next we have uveitis, an inflammation of the middle layer of the eye uvea. The most common type also called as an inflammation of the iris called iritis. Next we have aqueous humor is a transparent watery fluid similar to plasma but containing low protein concentration it is a secreted from the ciliary body a structure supporting the lens next we have a press biopia as you can see in a picture in this 
the gradual loss of your eyes ability to focus on nearby object next we have a anucleation is a removal of the eye that leaves the eye muscles and remaining orbital contacts intact this type of ocular surgery is indicated for a number of ocular tumors in eyes that have suffered severe trauma and in eyes that are otherwise blind and painful next one is a accenturation complete surgical removal of the eyeball as you can see in a picture and other contact of the eye socket usually in cases of malignant cancer Next we have a limbus the corneal limbus is the border of the cornea and the sclera means the white of the eye next we have a phacomalcification is a modern cataract surgery method in which the eye's internal lens is emulsified with an ultrasonic hand piece and aspirated from the eye aspirated fluids are replaced with irrigation of balanced salt solution to maintain the anterior chamber Uh, in socket usually in cases of malignant cancer next we have diabetic retinopathy diabetic retinopathy is a condition that manifests in people who have diabetes cause when high blood sugar levels damage the blood vessel in the retina this causes blood vessel to leak resulting in hemorrhage or to stop blood flow to the retina as you can see in a picture when blood flow to the retina decrease new tiny blood vessel can form that is dangerous to the whole eye this can cause cloudy or blurry vision that may lead to vision loss if this condition is left untreated it may cause complete blindness early stages of diabetic retinopathy may present with no symptoms thus being very important to go for regular eye examination later stages of diabetic retinopathy include an increased number of floaters means blurry spots moving around in your field of view blurry vision fluctuating vision poor night vision blank or dark areas in your field of vision colors that are harder to distinguish presenting with a washed out appearance so here all about diabetic retinopathy so here all about some basic medical terminology regarding ophthalmology hope you all very well understand if you have any suggestion you can dm us or let us know in our comment section so till then happy learning